Father, we've come to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody say thank you, Jesus.
for me what no one else will do. Everybody say, Himela, Himela. praise this morning and we lift up our voice and just worship him this morning because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever this is the first Sunday in the seventh month of the year 2019 we have crossed the first half now we are in the second half of the year it's been God all the way Can you bless the God of your journey to this morning the journey of 2019 has been has been about the Lord the one who has been on our side the one who has never left us our strength our rock our god our high tower can you lift up your voice this morning and just give him praise for january thank you for february thank him for march april may june and thank him because he has crossed you over into the second half and because he's strong and able to bring you to the end of the journey 2019 give him all the praise this morning every praise is to our god Every word of worship is to our God this morning. Lift up your voice in this place and let God hear your voice of gratitude. Let's appreciate him. Father, you are good. Thank you for your mercy that endures. A thousand has fallen, ten thousand on our right, Lord. But with your grace and with your help, Lord, we have crossed over. We have survived that which could have killed us, oh God. We have passed through waters and fires thank you because you have brought us out even into a wealthy place can we thank the god of our acceleration this morning the one who has given us speed the one who has given us grace the one upon whose wing we fly the bible says for underneath us are the everlasting hands can we bless him because he carries us he has carried us through the first phase of the year we know he will carry us through the end even to the end of the year 2019 give him praise because many may fall and many may die but you would stand you will see the very end of this year and thank you because you're not just going to be alive in in tears and in pains and in sicknesses no 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 the bible says i believe to have seen the goodness of the lord in the land of the living Give him praise because you know you will continually taste and feed on his goodness, even in the land of the living. Can we bless the name of the Lord this morning as a church? I want to give you a moment to just bless him for your family, bless him for your friends and bless him for your loved ones. Thank him for everything that he has been and for everything that he has done. Yahweh, we give you praise this morning. Thank you. You have done so much for us, oh God. We cannot tell it all. Zia <laughs> Ila naka bana gade shakata ba yada ba anda ta 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 zeliante kala mapora tabaha. Thank you for your faithfulness. Zeli kapa na kata la gada ba la taba yande sa zeko koto kusuta kala mata ba yada ba. We lift up your praise in this meeting this morning. We lift up your praise in this service this morning. As a church, we say thank you. Thank you because we've not had to bury any man. Thank you because we are not incarcerated this morning. Thank you because you have not been struck down by terminal diseases. Thank you because you have healed all our diseases. You have broken every chain. You have broken the gate of brass. You have cut the bars of iron asunder. We give you praise and glory. What shall we render this morning unto Jehovah? For all that you have done for us. For all that you have done for us. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Oh, what shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done so. Has the Lord done so very much for you this year, 2019? If he has, lift up your voice and just watch him in this morning. Oh, for he has done. Shall I go to the 
to you this morning God our healer God our Savior we bless your name no man deserves to be praised no authority deserves this praise no king no president deserves this praise the Bible says you are the only potentate the only potentate the only ruler that does not answer to any man the only God whose authority cannot be questioned 
that's why every praise belongs to you alone and you alone exclusively this morning we bow our heads we bow our hearts we bow our knee before you and we say receive every praise receive every glory receive every honor you have done so much you have done so much you have done innumerable things mighty things glorious things that no man can do you have done things that money cannot buy money cannot buy life money cannot give good health these are the things that you have done this morning bless the Lord oh our souls let everything that is within us bless his holy name this morning the one who has redeemed our life from death the one who has forgiven all our iniquities the one who has delivered us from the stormy pestilence the one who has delivered us from so great a death the one who will yet deliver us and so we put our trust in you this morning we say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord we give you praise this morning because one more time you're here in our midst have your way let your will be done oh God as we approach this second half of the year with your promise we move into it oh God with great confidence that you that have started a good thing you would finish it thank you because the finisher's grace is in the house this morning Wednesday you told us that you have set joy before us thank you because in this meeting we obtain joy and gladness we obtain joy and gladness blessed be God forever in Jesus matchless name we have given thanks if he's worthy to be praised in your life can you put those hands together for him this morning if he deserves all the praise if he's the one that has sustained you till this time put those hands together and give him praise please be seated glory to God God bless you choir thank you for that time of worship we give God praise because of his goodness his mercy that cannot be bought with a prize on Wednesday God gave us a sure word he said to us that he has said before us joy it means our eyes will not see shame our eyes shall not behold shame I said our eyes will not see shame our high shall not be old shame. It's only joy. According to the word of the Lord, he has declared it, and so it is in Jesus' name. All right. I want us to turn our Bibles with me this morning to the book of John, chapter 8. I was so excited here on Wednesday when Pastor Tosi was ministering the word. Because the Lord spoke to me very clearly of what to teach in this service earlier on in the week, and... On Wednesday, he dwelt on it very, very largely, and I gave God praise, and I still do give him praise this morning. And um, if you were not here on Wednesday, I would like to encourage you to go listen to that message again and be blessed. And of course, the prayer that we said after the word is also to offer our benefit. Jesus speaking in the book of John chapter 8. I want to read from verse 30. John chapter 8, I'll read from verse 30. I'm also going to take from the book of Timothy after I'm done with John. So you might just want to open the two. Right as the Spirit of God permits me this morning, I just want to share with us as it's been laid on my heart. The book of John chapter 8 from verse 30. Jesus speaking. He said, and he spake these words, many believed on him. Many believed on him. Then Jesus said, or then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Those who believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So there are levels of discipleship. You can be a disciple if you have the word of God for the moment. But if you continue in the word, your category is a disciple indeed. He said in 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1, I read from verse 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Say to yourself this morning, I have the good gift of God in me. 
Oh, that's not said with an assurance. Say to yourself, I have the good gift of God in me. All right, Paul to, to Timothy said, put to remembrance that you stir up this gift that is in you, that was communicated to you by the laying on of hands. And in verse 7, for God hath not given us <clears throat> the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can you say to yourself this morning, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's beautiful to know, of a sound mind. Well, I just want to communicate as the Lord has laid it on my heart. You find Paul severally speaking to Timothy in this wise about uh, not allowing any man to despise his ministry. If you read 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 12, you find Paul speaking to Timothy in these words, let no man despise your youth. Be an example of the believer or of a believer in word, in conversation, in charity, you know, in spirit, in faith, and in purity, on and on. You find Paul trying to make, make Timothy come to the reality of what he actually carries on his inside. You read in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 from verse 9, 10, and 11. You also find Paul encouraging the church of Corinth to receive Timothy as a servant indeed and that Timothy should not be timid or intimidated. He was quite young as a minister of the gospel and he had several elders, several people ahead of him. But grace chose him to be a son unto Paul. <clears throat> and he had every reason to be intimidated. He had any, every reason to be afraid of his call. He doubted probably his call. He wasn't too certain. So it, it, it took Paul three different scriptures in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and 2 Timothy chapter 1 that we just read from verse 6 to 7 to encourage Timothy to be confident in the Lord to not abhor any fear on his inside, to be bold. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is as bold as a lion. And in this kingdom that we belong to, it requires a lot of boldness and confidence in God to be able to fully maximize all the provisions of God. I'll say that again. It will require a lot of boldness. And I'm not talking about human boldness. I'm not talking about confidence that is rested in the flesh. He said, let no man glory in the flesh. I'm not talking about the confidence that is in a man or in flesh or in a brother or a father or a mother, but a confidence that has its foundation in God. The Bible says, for they which do know their God, Daniel chapter 11, I think verse 32, shall be strong. They who do know their God shall be strong and will do exploit. So the premise upon which they would do exploit is their knowledge of him. The pedestal upon which they would stand and communicate and do exploit is based on the knowledge of God. And the same way as Jesus told the Jews that believed on him, saying to them that it is what you know of me, the truth that you know, that will set you free. Not the common truth. Not the reality of the world that the eyes can see and say this is true. I'm saying the truth that only reside in God. And you would always find that most times or many of the times or maybe all of the time because God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts greater than our thoughts. You'll find that the truth of God most times is always at variance, always at variance with the truth of man. Is always at variance with the truth of man. God's thoughts are deeper than the thoughts of man. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1, Isaiah was speaking. He said, whose report will you believe and to whom has the harm of the Lord been revealed? There is a report of God that will not agree with the report of men. That's one thing I want you to know this morning. He does not have any proximity to what men, men and man and God are two separate entities. We are far apart. Our thoughts with the thoughts of God are different when we think as man because God is the God who calls the things that be not as though they were. He doesn't look at your reality. We have heard that said to us many times. God does not look at your reality to communicate your truth to you. He looks at himself. He searches deep within himself and he communicates the truth that is in him to you and which of which most times this, this truth does not agree with the truth of man. Jesus said to, him, to the men, to the Jews that believe, 
It is the truth that a man knows. The truth that I am. Because in John chapter 14 and verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and I am the life. So if you come to know me for who I am, if you know me for yourself, then you can appreciate truth. And by my truth, you can overcome the lies of the world. And there can be no true truth. There can only be a truth and a lie. That's one thing I want to make established very clearly this morning. There can only be a truth and a lie. And the, the lie of this world imprisons men. The Bible calls the devil uh, the father of lies because truth belongs to God. If you read that John chapter 8 when Jesus was talking about his father and the father of the Jews who did not believe, he called the devil the father of lies. And his lies are meant for a purpose. The lie of the devil is meant to induce fear in the heart of men. The lie of the devil is meant to induce fear in the lie, I mean, life of men. A lie is whatsoever that does not proceed out of the mouth of God. Whatsoever has not been communicated from the mouth of God, I don't care who says it. I don't care if it's the president that said it. I don't care. The Bible says when there was famine in the land and there was no food and people were engaged cannibalism and all that was all the provision was gone the bible says elijah the prophet under the anointing of the holy ghost communicated to the people he said by this time tomorrow there shall be abundance i mean the 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 chief uh, 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 upon whose uh, shoulder the king leaned upon the special advisor to the king of those the economic advisor said to elijah even if god were to open the windows of heaven can these things happen can they come to reality elijah said it is not by power nor by might he said your eyes will see it but your mouth will not taste out of it the devil will always want to fire arrows of lies to the heart of men because the truth of god does not agree with intellect it does not ag approve or agree with our reasoning and you would say well why did god give us the ability to reason in the first place yes he gave us the ability to reason he, he did not make us robots he is not controlling us from heaven he wants to make uh, known the power or i mean his power that he has vested in the saints to the devil that my son even though he has the ability to comprehend he has a brain to think he can abandon what the brain is communicating and still hold on and trust in me even though his reality does not speak what i'm saying to him the lord wants to take joy over the enemy the lord wants to bask in joy over the devil and say like he said unto the devil in the case of job have you beheld my servant job god wants to make make your life a testimony to the devil he want to make boast of you in the presence of the host of darkness and even though you've got brains even though your reality may be small yet you believe that your letter end shall greatly increase that's what the devil the lord wants to do always with the devil he wants to communicate the truth through the life of his servant and a lot of people walk and live in fear all kinds of insecurities today because of what they have seen of what they have been told by people that they don't measure your hope the lord cannot do it even if it is to open the windows of heaven the times have passed over you the time of that promotion is gone your season is past you when you look at that job application and they put a peg on it and you say the age bracket is not in your favor and you say to yourself when and how will my opportunity come up how can i ride over the storms of life the devil keeps bringing this information into our mind so that we can believe in the lie the media does not even help at all they all these are put together by the devil to bring lies even though they might be the reality but these are lies in God when you put the reality of men in the scales and the balance of God you find them to be lies because with God all things are possible the devil has lied to many of us the devil is still trying to lie to many of us he's still trying to say to you that situation cannot turn around even though the Lord has communicated speed in the last seven days you can't really see that speed will this also come to pass I don't think so i said towards the last time i ministered here that the first thing the devil communicated to man when god created adam and eve was when he came and said to adam as god really told you as god really said these things it will come in to make of a lie what god has said even though he knows that that's the truth he is the father of lies and this morning everything that he has said and done with your mind and toyed with your mind and toyed with your spirit to a point where he has brought you to a point of believing what he has said by the truth that is in the word of god you shall be liberated he said you will know the truth and the truth that you know will set you free the only truth abides in the word of god 
The truth is what the word has said. And whatsoever the word has said is what will come to pass. When he got to the tomb of Lazarus, he said, Lazarus is sleeping. The people said, how can you say these things? For four days, this guy is gone. In fact, he's buried. We have covered him up. As a matter of fact, we have rolled a stone against him. In fact, he's even stinking. How can you say he's sleeping? He's dead. He's completely dead. And Jesus said, no, he's sleeping. For if thou wouldest believe, eh, you will see the glory of God. Eh, Martha said to him and Mary, Jesus will believe eh, that he will rise again on the last day. But we know it's a certainty. He knows he was your friend. And on the day of the resurrection, on the last day, he will rise. Jesus said, I have not said to you that I will be the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Meaning even in the presence, I would, the presence. I will do what no man has done before. No man has raised a man who was dead for four days before that time. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says, and he that was there, the lie of the devil was done away with. And the truth of the resurrection was communicated in that miracle. That's what God always seeks to do. To discredit. To put a total hand to every work of the devil. How does he induce fear by the things that we see? Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33. The Bible says when the 12 spies went up from Israel to spy on the, the, the land of promise, Canaan. They had journeyed for several years in the wilderness. And here they are, they, they are looking at their promised land. And the Bible says Moses sent them to, you know, spy out the land, look at the terrain. What are the things obtainable from these grounds before we enter in, into the land? The Bible says they came back with evil reports. Numbers 13 and verse 33 he said even we in our own eyes are like grasshoppers we are like grasshoppers we can't go up we can't overtake them in this land are the sons of Anak giants dwell there it is only those who have got PhD that can get that kind of opportunity there are giants there I cannot find my way I only have a BSc as a matter of fact it's a 2-2 and then you are saying that opportunity is mine it does not agree with my sense there are giants occupying the land if the Lord says he has given you a city and you don't even own a room and you're saying there are giants when God was speaking to Abraham he had no place the bible says he was dwelling in temporary tents you know what tents are tents are not permanent structures tents are temporary structures you just pull them up for a purpose to be there before you move again they were nomadic men so and god said i will give you the ends of the earth he said to david in psalm chapter 2, two he said acts of me and i will give unto you the uttermost part of the earth how can abraham be seeing that kind of reality when he didn't have a roof on his head a proper mansion upon his head and god is saying hey, your 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 seed will be like the sand of the seashores and your descendant will take the gate of their enemy his reality did not agree with what god was saying but no wonder god said to him when he had separated himself from lord abraham from where you stand look westward northward southward as far as your eyes can see i am going to give to you what are the things that you are seeing what you see can only induce faith if you are seeing through the eyes of god if you are seeing what the devil is saying then fear will grip you always what you see can bring all kinds of fear. They saw the giants and they said, you know what? We can't go near that city. Moses, let's just forget about this promised land. But the Bible says Caleb and Joshua had another spirit with them. They had another spirit with them. The devil does all kinds of, brings all kinds of reports that will fear, I mean, that will fuel the fear that people already have. You know, I was speaking to somebody during the course of the week and she, she told me that there, there's a particular thing she's been harboring for years and that the Lord does set her free from it. For In fact, she said specifically 10 years. She had a, a growth in her body and he said the first time she discovered that growth, she just assumed did that one plus one and all that. And of course, all that her body was feeling at that time and by going on the internet to browse and to research, everything was just agreeing with everything she was feeling in her body. And she just concluded that she had cancer. And for 10 years, she spoke to no man. He said she prayed, but she prayed with fear. He said, that was my greatest fear. I've had it all my life. He said, the day before she spoke to me, she actually went to the doctor. And the doctor confirmed that it was not cancerous. It was not, you know, and all. It was not malignant. He said, and she felt all kinds of relief. And I said, because a man said to you that you've not got cancer, you believe. Because a man said to you that you have cancer, you believe. And because he has told you that you don't have it, the devil would bring up, see, sometimes what you're going through, when you research on it, it doesn't even have to be health, it could be anything. When you research on it, it would only agree with your reality and then it induces more fear. 
You speak to people and ask them about it and they, they begin to speak things that align with what you are going through and say, I'm done for. That's what the devil does. He brings people, he brings news. The Bible calls them in Psalms chapter 91 and verse 3. The Bible says the Lord will deliver you from noisome pestilence. Noisome pestilences. When I saw that word noisome, it caught my attention. Noisome. Full of noise. If they, 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 they all of a sudden speak now that Ebola is everywhere, is in Ikeja. Some people will never go to Ikeja again. If they say some people are just trooping in now from the north, uh, the earthmen are, are there, they are everywhere now in, in Ikeja. Nobody will leave this building this morning. It's a noisome pestilence, but it's a lie. When I say it's a lie, I'm not saying it's not the reality. I'm telling you in God, it is a lie. He said it would deliver you from the noisome pestilence. It's full of all kinds of noises. And it's coming every day. The devil keeps firing it into the hearts of people. Noises everywhere. And you know the funny thing? The fear of a thing sometimes kills people. The, I, I was reading last night and was reading a little on fear and all of that, on terminal diseases and all that. And some form of experiments have been carried and they discovered that the people who live oblivious of the kind of illness and the diseases they carry, they even live normal lives. But as soon as they, they are diagnosed and they know that they carry HIV, that's the end of it. It's not the HIV that is killing them, it's the fear that I carry it in my body. Every day they wake up with that reality, when am I going to die? The devil keeps bringing, well, any little headache that comes, this is the end. Any little malaria, oh, this, maybe this is the end of my life. The, the devil will rally around things that will fuel. The Bible speaks in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 and 15. He said, in as much as the sons are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself was partaker of the same, that he might through his death destroy him that has the power of death, which is the devil, and that he might save all those who for the fear of death have been subject to bondage all their lives. So the reason why Jesus came to destroy, he didn't come to destroy the devil alone. The Bible says he has come to also deliver those who have been subjected to bondage by the reason of fear. He has delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime. Imagine, all their lifetime. She was there for 10 years, all their lifetime, subjected to bondage because of fear. And so what Jesus came to do by partaking of the flesh is to destroy the chains that have held you in fear. This morning you're sitting listening to me. What are those things that make you afraid? That makes your boldness and confidence level drop in the Lord? That you, after you're prayed and you feel so good about yourself, when you hear it again, or the reality comes to your face again, or that man or that woman that feel, makes you so, so insecure or talks to you that there is nothing good about your life, eh? nothing good about your career, nothing good about your marriage. As soon as you face him again, he talks to you and then you go down again. And fear grips you. Anxiety grips you. All kinds of worry grips you. That is the project of the enemy. He wants to keep bringing pictures that bring fear. And fear is feared by satanic information. He uses men to bring it. All kinds of intimidation to a believer. And this is quite deadly. It will not let you trust and hope in the Lord. David was speaking. He said, why art thou cast down my soul? Psalms 43, is it verse 5 now? He said, why art thou disquieted within me? All kinds of noises in my mind. He said, why art thou disquieted? All kinds of storm ruin in me. He said, keep calm my soul. He was speaking to his mind. Because his mind has been fed by the things that he has heard. He has heard that war is coming. He has heard that trouble is coming. He has heard that famine is coming. They have looked at the economy and they cannot see anything good. And it has created a picture in his mind and there is a lot of noise in his heart. How shall we flee? How shall we run? The second way by which in this fear is by what we, we see. The Bible says the servants of the, of the man of God woke up in the morning and they saw the enemies of the prophets all around the mountain surrounding them. He said, Master, how are we going to run? He became so afraid. How are we going to escape these things? The things we see and the things we hear, these are the things that bring fear into our hearts. It's the devil's calculation. He's fueling them every day. People are prosperous and they are still afraid of losing their prosperity. Hence the high fences. Hence all kinds of security. Because they are just, they don't know, they, they just, there is just something in their mind that tells them they may lose everything in a day. Just like Job. Job was prosperous. I love this teaching pastor gave us some time ago about Job. And it's so beautiful. Job was prosperous. 
Job was living large. The Bible called him the greatest man in the East at that time. He feared the Lord. But in his heart somewhere, he was abhorring fear that he would lose everything in a day. Job chapter 3 and verse 25. He said, the things that I feared the most have finally gotten me. So, in the midst of his prosperity, he was still afraid. And God is, what God is trying to do this morning is to bring us to a place of security. Where fear cannot penetrate our hearts. Rather, confidence and boldness is our lot. Where we can look at situations that may be noisome and pestilences and still trust in God and still believe in his word. Job said the things that I fear the most. So I had all the estates, all the buildings, my children are doing well in school. Everything was fine, but I was still harboring, hey, that plane crash. Oh, that sickness. Oh, I just drive on the road this morning and somebody just comes from nowhere. All kinds of imagination. And then you have read things, kidnapping. and and Maybe it can happen. Maybe. Job had it in his heart. And all of a sudden, the devil, (laughs) see, the Bible says a man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. There will be no room for the devil to come to attack Job if there was no fear in him. There will be no room. And Jesus said, the prince of this world comes and he finds nothing. It was because, you know, when Job, the devil came to God and said, is it not because you have made a hedge around him and all that? God said, okay, fine. Go and do what you want to do. Go and tempt him. And the only pathway by which the devil could come into Job's life was that fear. If there was no fear, there would have been no entrance into Job. No entrance. But the devil found his agent in him. And he walked with that agent. And, you know, it's funny that when God wants to purge us of some things, sometimes he will allow the devil to come in. It would allow him tempt us. It would allow him test us. Maybe I'll use that. To try us and try our faith. So that God can get rid of that perpetual fear. Some people wake up in the middle of the night, any little sound. They are, they, they, even in their own houses, they are afraid. They are scared. Any little thing, they cannot hold themselves together. Fear, there is just a fear. And the funny thing is sometimes there are fears of the unknown. Things that you don't even know about. You are just afraid. You are just wondering. Any little reaction, any little saying, any little news, you are just jittery. Your hands are shaking. You are wondering how shall we escape just like that servant. As soon as the devil came into Job, saw the fear, destroyed him. I tell you the truth. God used that test to bring out Job. Because tell me the truth. Even if after God had restored Job and everything came back to him, multiplied by seven. Even if that situation repeated itself, do you think Job will ever doubt God again? No, he will never. Because at that junction, his fear had been completely destroyed destroyed so god used the devil to flush out that thing called fear in job that's why anytime the devil is at work i tell you the truth this morning the devil is god's most loyal servant the devil is god's most loyal agent he thinks he's working against god he's working for god so anytime it's coming to you harming your life he's not working against you all things are working together for your good first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8 the bible says if they had known they would not have crucified the lord of glory because in crucifying him they opened up his way to glory so that that fear that still exists in your heart god wants to get rid of it is the devil may want to come in by that fear god wants to get rid of that fear god wants to make sure that everything he brings with the fear is completely destroyed like i said this morning if the testimony of man is true what is the testimony of god concerning your life first john chapter 5 i was reading and the bible made it very very clear i want to quickly turn there and read so that we can see what scriptures talk about god's testimony to us we must believe in god's testimony rather than believing in the testimony of men first john chapter 5 and verse 9 he said if we receive the testimony of men the testimony of god is greater for this is the greater testimony of God which he has testified in his son. He that believeth on the Son of God had this testimony in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar because he believeth not the record that, the, that God gave of his son. And this is the record. So there are two types of record. There is the record of the testimony of men and there is the record of God. And John made it very clear that if you have believed the testimony of that doctor, of that pastor over your life that tells you, you know what? Your level of salvation cannot attract this kind of miracle yet. And you have believed it. God said, no, move away. move, Climb higher. Climb the rung of the liar. Move away from the realms of men. And come believe my testimony. For there is a certain testimony that has been recorded, sealed by the blood of the Lamb, that cannot be changed. This is the record that God has given unto you eternal life. 
He has given us something with which we can overcome every fear. He has given us something with which we can live in boldness and confidence. That's what God is saying this morning. God has given us something that is greater. We need to bring quietness into our mind by the word of God. We need to bring quietness into our spirit by the word of God. Isaiah said, keep silent before me. God speaking, O ye island, all kinds of island. You know when Jesus got to the house of the, 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 the daughter that was there, the Bible says there were all kinds of mourners. And they were wailing, they were crying. All those tears and crying of, oh, you think they really love the daughter? They were distractions to the faith of Jesus. They were noisome pestilences. There were things that if Jesus was praying for that girl and was still hearing people crying in the background, maybe the faith of Christ would not have worked. What did Jesus do? He said, get rid of the mourners. All of them, he sent them outside. Everyone that may want to confuse your faith and your confidence, put them aside. Everything that fuels your fear, put them away. Jesus pulled them all outside the room. He said, let everybody get out of the room. I don't want any distraction to my faith. And as soon as they were out, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 25, held the daughter and pulled out all from the state of death. And the Bible says the girl rose again. Someone needs to send out the mourners from your life. The mourners, those who think they are pitying you, they are helping you, oh, they feel your pain. Sometimes they are not helping your faith. They are making you the more afraid. God is saying we need to pull them out. We don't have to be ignorant of all of, the, I mean, of all the works of the devil through the instrumentalities of mourners around us. They may seem to be friends. It's time to move them aside and walk with the knowledge of God. There is a superior knowledge and that's what, what God is communicating this morning unto every one of us and it is by this knowledge we can pull all works of the devil put them out of our lives and be completely free of fear and be able to take up that which God has given unto us your testimony this morning against the noisome pestilences is that God has given you all things that pertains unto life in the past few weeks we have talked about the instrumentality of the word of God and the importance of communicating the word of God not just when we are faced with situations but every day we wake up and declare the word it brings a lot of confidence I don't know how many of us have gone back to research on our word yeah we we're given 10 scriptures last Sunday we can do more we can go beyond those 10 scriptures and keep finding our realities in the world and when that fear comes speak the word of God when that anxiety comes and that worry attack it with the word it will flee he said resist the devil and it will flee what is the testimony God has for your life I love a man David in scriptures the Bible Bible says when Goliath came against Israel, Goliath was making all kinds of threats, threatening them every day and for 30 days. The Bible says all Israel was jittery. Who is your champion? Let him come and fight me. And they saw the heights, what their heights saw, I said that earlier. They heard the voice and the threatening. They said, you know what, we can't fight this guy. Even Saul, the, the tallest man, with all his hammer, everybody went into their corner. A lot of believers are hiding in the corner. God is saying, it's time to come out. No more fears. Cast not away your confidence. Come and face your Goliath. That thing that is making you scared, you know it in your heart. That thing that is making you afraid, that you, the fear of failure. God is saying this morning, come out. I love what David did. The Bible says when David came against Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you read in verse 48, that's what God wants you to do this morning as I begin to bring this message to a close. The Bible says as soon as David got on the battle line and he saw Goliath, as soon as Goliath began to draw his weapons of warfare, the Bible says David ran towards Goliath. Kai. What was making every other person afraid? Maybe what was making him jittery? David ran and faced his fear. God is saying, face your fear. He's only bragging. He's got nothing on the inside. It only requires a stone of the word of God. Your Goliath will come down. It only requires a, a properly sought out stone. A scripture that applies. That Goliath that looks so great. That mountain that looks so huge. It will fall down flat. David did not <laughs> chicken out. As soon as he saw him drawing, he saw David run, verse 45. But before David began, began to run, he did something in verse 45 to 48. 45 and 46 and 47, you see David bringing up the testimony of God. The testimony of God. The God who delivered me from the lion and the bear. I was in the wood. The lion came against my flock. I ran after him and I slew him and delivered my sheep from him. The bear came against my flock and took away one of the sheep. 
I ran after the bear and I broke his back. I took the cob, I mean the sheep from the bear. And he, he began to, 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 to rouse himself in the testimony. He began to stir up himself. The Bible says the testimony of the Lord is sure. He makes wise the simple. The testimony of the Lord cannot fail. It is sure. It is rooted on a sure foundation. The report of God is sure. Surer than what the doctor has said to you. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Surer than the budget of Nigeria. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Surer than what your spouse has promised you and failed. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Surer than what your lecturer has told you. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Surer than sometimes what your husband has said to you and your wife has said to you, you can amount to nothing. Your testimony is sure. The testimony of the Lord in your life is sure. Surer than what your parents have said about you. That you are the least of all. They looked at David and said, you are the least of all. He was a, he was a bastard. He was, he was a comely guy, but they threw him in the wilderness. And all the other sons were basking in glory with their father. David was forgotten at the backside of life. And when the time of the anointing came to be anointed for king, the other sons thought they were legitimate to the throne. But the Bible says David who had a testimony, a sure testimony, even though he was in the backside of life, Samuel said we will not sit. All of us will stand until the man of testimony comes. He will be anointed king in the midst of his brethren. I said to you this morning, it is your testimony, your word that is sure. It is surer than any fear that the devil is bringing to your heart. What is my testimony? What is my word? What is my testimony? Against that picture, I've looked at it. And they said, in, in nine months, is death. This kind of sickness has no cure. He said, whose report have we believed? Isaiah 53. He said, for surely he has borne our griefs. Verse 4. He has carried away all our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace is laid on him. And by his stripes we were healed. God laid it all, all your suffering, all your pain, all your tears, all your struggles, all, all that, that debt that is looking at you in the face like a Goliath saying, Lord, this 10 million, how will it go? The testimony of the Lord is surer than the debt. I'm saying to you this morning, is surer than that indebtedness that is looking at you in the face and saying, I would ruin your life. Face that Goliath this morning and bring words. He said, bring words with you when you come to the Lord. Bring your word with you as you face your Goliath and say to that Goliath, run towards it it's time to run that's what i'm saying this morning on wednesday pastor declared it and as he was declaring it i remember the testimony of pastor on several occasions when he has asked people to run and i was running here when i was praying because it is time to run and face our fears the lord is on our side we cannot be defeated david said my by god psalm 18 and verse 29 i can run through a troop by my god i can leap over a wall. how can one man run towards a troop how how can one man, if it's not the confidence eh, that is induced, induced by the Holy Ghost, eh, he said, I will run through a troop. First Corinthians 9 24, Paul said, Run, therefore, that you may obtain. Those who will obtain the set joy are those who will run and overcome their fears. It's time to run, church. It's time to run, church. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 4. The angel said unto the man, Tell this young man to run. Tell him to run. Let him not run away from the fear anymore. Let him face that fear. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. He said, Cast not away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. Everything that's fear has stolen from you. As you run this morning, the recompense and the reward that you have lost to fear, there will be a retribution, a restoration in multiple form by the power of God in the name of Jesus. He said in verse 35, 36, you have need of patience. After you have done the will of God that you may obtain the promise. He said, verily I say unto you, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He that will come, that's verse 37, will come and will not tarry. Verse 38, he said, for we are not of them that draw back unto perdition. God is saying, don't be like Saul that will go hiding when he sees his fears. He said, we are of them who believe unto the saving of our soul. It is the just that will live by faith. And if any man draw back, he said, my soul will not have pleasure. God is not looking for believers that will be timid. God is saying to Timothy, face your fears. Don't despise your youth. Even though you are young, I've made you a minister, a bishop over the, the, the old ones in church. Whatsoever position God has given you, and you are still in that office, and you know your age, you, you, are, you are the youngest, and they have made you a supervisor over the older ones, and you are afraid of them. Anytime you want to go in that meeting, you are, you are mindful of the things you say. I'm not asking you to disrespect man. I'm saying, take your place. You have been 
been made a leader. Become the leader that God has called you. Speak the word without timidity. Approach your fears and overcome them. It is by confidence that would obtain all that God has promised us in this season. Can we give God praise this morning? Just bow your heads and say, Lord, I thank you because my trust is in you. My confidence is not in the flesh. My fear cannot have me anymore. My Goliath cannot hold me anymore. I give you praise. Somebody give God praise this morning and thank him for faith and confidence. Father, we give you all the praise. Let's glorify Daddy for what we have had this morning. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. Let's give him all. Let's give him all adorations. Let's thank him. Father, we give all the glory, honor, and praise to your holy name. We are so grateful, Father, because, Lord, you are dealing with this in the house today, and we are so thankful. Blessed is your name. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Uh, I must be very honest with you. The Lord is dealing with this in the house right now. And this is such a very hard word. It's a word that is from the throne room of God for each and every one of us. I don't know which aspect of your life we are in God has seen fear. Now, yesterday, the spirit of fear literally visited me in person. And it visited me till this morning. I had to take authority, even coming to church this morning, I had to take authority and bind that spirit and cast it out. Now, I must let you know, um, God began to speak to me and he began to give me some one or two words. And I could understand that there are people here that have been limited by fear from stepping into their next level. Uh, I did not discuss with Pastor Tommy, we, we don't discuss as to what he preaches anyway, but the Holy Spirit will take me through what the message will be before uh, the, the Sunday service. Uh, and of course, that is just to let you know that please take these words very seriously very very seriously because god is dealing with you as we begin to pray this morning i see god taking away limitations of fear i, I think somebody's image should be louder every area where fear has limited you i see god taking it away so before we start praying let's quickly um check the scripture that the lord gave me yes tonight as i was praying on these uh and then i will tell you one or two things that happened yesterday and the Lord said, the way up is what is opening up today. And I thank God for what we uh, heard today. And I will tell you what happened. <laughs> and then you will know that this is God working everything out. Glory be to God. Isaiah chapter number 40. I want us to start reading from verse 26. Isaiah chapter number 40 from verse number 26. We're going to read to the last verse. Glory be to God in the highest. Now, I, I need a loud reader, please, on Mike. King James Version first. Isaiah chapter number 40, glory be to God in the highest, amen. Are we all there? So let us all read together, or uh, let somebody read so that we can all follow. Glory be to God. <laughs> okay, one, two, go. Lift up your Lift eyes up. on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bring out how they are host by number. He called them all by names by the greatness of his might. Now, please understand here, the Bible is talking about the stars. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, lift up your eyes and see, behold who has created all these things. That called, I mean, called out all those hosts, even in their numbers and by their name. And the Bible says none fail it among them. Now, m please move on. For that he is strong in power. Mm -hmm. Not one fail it. <laughs> Why sayest thou, O Jacob, mm -hmm. and speakest, O Israel, mm -hmm. my way is hid from the Lord, mm -hmm. and my judgment is passed over from my God? Mm -hmm. As thou not known, mm -hmm. as thou not heard, mm -hmm. that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the hands of the earth, fainteth not, mm -hmm. neither is weary. Mm -hmm. There is no session of his understanding. Oh, yes. He giveth power to the faint and oh, to yes. them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Mm -hmm. Even the youth shall faint and oh, be yes. weary. Oh, yes. And the young men shall utterly fall. Mm -hmm. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. They shall walk and not faint. God bless you. Now, I would like us please to read Message Bible. 
uh, it, it helps us to please understand some certain concepts there, most especially verses 26, 27, and 28, and maybe into 29. Amen? Uh, message Bible, and then good news as well. Glory be to God. We can have the two hope on. Amen? So, can we read? One, two, go. Look at the nice skies. Now, look at the nice skies. Yes. Why? Who do you think made all these things? Mm -hmm. Who matches this army of stars out each night? Who matches this army of stars out this night? You know what God is talking about? He's showing you the magnitude of his power. Now, please understand, I am describing the majesty of God. That you, can, you see, please, a, a lot of us, we are consumed with the size of our problem. And please, insofar as the magnitude of your problem is what you see, you will never see the power of God. It is time you stop telling God about the size of that problem. It's time you start informing the problem about how big your God is. Do you understand what I'm talking about? My God is far bigger than you. The Bible says, oh, look at the skies. Even if you are so blind, he said, come out and come and see. When Abraham was doubting, God said, count the stars. Can you count it? You know, they were moon worshippers. They were star worshippers then. He said, can you count He said, now, at least you can relate with this one, Zabi. He says, so shall your children be. He couldn't believe it. He blew his mind. The Bible said, and Abraham believed. When he saw it, he said, at times you need to see some certain things. And of course, the Bible may just tell us in one sentence what happened, but it was more than one sentence. It was what? More than one sentence. You, you know it was a whole conversation. You understand what I'm talking about? Look, uh, can you count all these stars? <laughs> Let me tell you this. The Bible said, he called out the stars. There are several galaxies in the world. Milky Way, as I was coming here this morning, God was just speaking to me. He said, do you know that your galaxy is called Milky Way? He said, Milky Way galaxy is just one of the galaxies. We have over 100 billion galaxies in the world. Now, Milky Way galaxy is just one of the galaxies. The sun that you see, the solar system, is just one of the stars in Milky Way galaxy. Milky Way galaxy has billions of stars. There are billions of stars as potent and as able and having the same capacity as the sun inside Milky Way galaxy. And there are about over 100 billion galaxies in the world. Now you can now understand how many stars are in the sky that we see. The Bible said he called them out in the night and he named, he named them by name, one by one. Ah. <laughs> hey, the God we are dealing with, ladies and gentlemen, is not a small boy. <laughs> Let me tell somebody, say relax. <laughs> yeah, I said relax. <laughs> Enough of being afraid of what is making you afraid. God is saying, relax, I'm bigger than the problem. I am stronger than that which is troubling you. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, please, read again, Pastor. Verse 26, yes? Who do you think, match, who do you think made all this? Mm -hmm. Who matches this army of stars out each night? Mm -hmm. Count them off. Calls each by name. Calls each by name. I mean, even the galaxies, you can't finish calling them by name over a hundred billion galaxies. And there are billions of stars in every galaxy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And the Bible says God knows each of them by name. Hey. <laughs> even if I have to mention the names of everybody in church, I'm very sure I may mix some names. But there is one who knows everything. He's too big. Can we clap for Jesus? <laughs> Please move on, Pastor. So magnificent. Hmm. So powerful. So magnificent. And I'm... never overlooks a single one. The Aya. Oda Jukwe. Koje Gwagbemi. My God is so magnificent, so powerful, but very humble that he can relate with me in my low estate. He never overlooks anybody. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, please move on to the next verse. Yes. Why would you ever now, complain, oh this Jacob? Is, this is now where the problem is. Now look at it. Why would you ever complain, yes? Or whine, Israel, mm -hmm. saying, Say, God has lost track of me. Can you see? God has forgotten all my troubles. He doesn't remember. He doesn't even know that I'm existing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All these issues I'm going through is just my own personal issues. As far as God is concerned, he lives in a world where, you know, is just sophisticating and frolicking in his own realm. He doesn't even understand if there is a boy here that is going through anything. That's what history was saying. 
God is too busy. He has so many things. Can you imagine he's feeding all the plants, feeding all the animals, feeding these billions and trillions of them? How will he not think of this mommy? Ah, he can't think of me. Please move on. God has lost track of me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care what happens to me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Yes? Don't you know anything? Mm -hmm. Haven't you been listening? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. <laughs> God lasts. <laughs> Please move to Message Bible. Uh, 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 move to Good News. God bless you. Move to Good News. Just read those three verses and then I go straight into... Um, what God wants me to tell you as we begin to pray today. Look up at the sky. Mm -hmm. Who created the stars you see? Mm -hmm. The one who leads them out like an army. Mm. He knows how many there are ay, 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 and ay, ay, calls ay. each one by name. Kazakata, His ay, power ay. is so great. Kaya Not Kota. one of them is ever missing. Kaya Israel, Kata. why ay. then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles? Can you or, see? Or Even care. if all the billions upon billions upon billions of stars, not one is missing. How much more his own son? Will he allow his son to be missing? <laughs> History, why are you not complaining that God doesn't, God doesn't take cognizance of my issues? He doesn't care. Please read that area again. Israel, Israel. Mm -hmm. why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles? Mm -hmm. Or care if you suffer injustice. Mm -hmm. Don't you know? Mm. Haven't you heard? Mm. The Lord is the everlasting God. Oh, yes. He created all the world. Oh, yes. He never grows tired or weary. Oh, yes. No one understands his thoughts. God bless you. Just hold on there. I'm just going to tell you this. Something that happened yesterday. And then we go into prayers. The Lord began to speak to me yesterday. I was praying. I was studying and all that. Uh, when it was time for the Nigeria match, the match that was played, the Lord began to say some things to me. I, you know, <laughs> naturally speaking, I just found myself worshipping and I was fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And then the Lord said something to me. He said, my son, why don't you begin to pray for the Nigerian team? Because I firstly listened to, you know, some analysis before I entered the match. When you listen to analysis, if you are not very careful, you will listen to paralysis. <laughs> Every faith was paralyzed by those people. <laughs> All in the name of uh, analysis. <laughs> so I, I was just listening to them and by the time they finished all what they would say, there was no faith left. Do you understand? It was like Goliath coming out. <laughs> Do you understand? They said, ah, those Gamerians, they will finish Nigeria. They will, uh, uh, in fact, so the Nigerians were calling in to say there is nothing good in that team. You can be sure if Madagascar can mess them up. In fact, this is going to be a big disgrace for Nigeria. <laughs> and this and this and that. Okay, let's let the match start. And then when the match started, the Lord just said something to me. He said, my son, why don't you... He just brought the case of Moses and Israel going to fight the Hamlet to me. Moses told um, Joshua, I said, tomorrow appoint some soldiers and go and fight the Hamlet Why Why I go up to the mountain top? It's, and the Bible says, as, as long as the hands of Moses were raised up, the Israelites prevailed. When the hands of Moses came down, what happened? The Amalekites prevailed. God just gave me that scripture exactly. He said, why don't you start praying for these people? Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have heard all they have to say that they can't perform. Now, pray for them. And you know what? I just started praying. Now, I'm just sharing my personal experience, please. I'm not trying to say... This is how it happened. That is how it happened. I'm just sharing past. I'm very humble about my own personal. This is my own encounter with the Holy Ghost. And I have a right to have my encounter with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't know if somebody agrees with me. So he said, why don't you start praying for these people? So I just began to pray in tongues. Lego Janamante. And I began to release the strength of God into them. The next thing I saw, Nigeria scored. You mean Nigeria scored? Oh, I, I just worship the Lord and I stopped praying. I'm telling you the truth. I stopped. Now, the next thing we now began to see the Cameroonians coming strong against Nigeria. When they are coming strong, you know, your heart will be beating. And then the next thing, of course, even when you're, oh, hey, 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 you, 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 to even remember the next tongue, self, your mind is gone. So I just dropped the thing. Before, the, before we knew what was happening, the first goal came in, the second goal came in, it was now 2 1 against Nigeria. By the time we finished, <laughs> the pastors in our came, we now started talking. 
He said, Pastor, he said, ah, they were going to beat Nigeria silly. We were talking, we were talking. He said, those guys are actually physically more fit. And you know, Cameroonians are tall, giant, lanky. So they are the Goliaths that when you see them, <laughs> your heart is filled with fear. Is somebody here what I'm talking about? And of course, they have this body that, at, uh, fever, is it fever or calf? How to ban them from wearing the kind of clothes I wear? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because when they wear the thing, it will be intimidating on their opponents. <laughs> and you see Nigeria, this small beside you. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> the all, Nigeria hall back was so afraid. <laughs> it was so short, so small beside. <laughs> the person is to back. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So you see, that was going on. He said, Pastor, he said, and they were young. He said, they are very energetic. He said, there's so much energy in them. Pastor said to me, everything. By the time he finished, he said, they were like 20. They are... So by the time he finished, the little faith that was left. <laughs> now finally what? Was go... But when it was about to finally go, and I grabbed it back, I told Pastor, I said, I'll win this people. I said, you will see. And the Holy Spirit said to me, go back and do what I told you to do. They started the second half. I didn't do it. As maybe some few minutes into it, the Holy Ghost said, I said, go back. As I started again, I, and I began to pray for them. I was praying 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 for them. The next thing, Nigeria scored. The next thing again, Nigeria scored. Now, at that time, when I was praying for them, people were calling me. They are here. Sister Tokumbo and the rest. They are here. They were calling me. I would say, please call me after the match. Because I, I knew that that was a distraction to stop me from praying. <laughs> Do you get what I'm talking about? I discovered that all the three goals Nigeria scored was when I was praying. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And God now said something to me. He said, why don't you switch over to Thanksgiving? He said, I will give you another goal. So I, I started it. And, then, and I brought down my hand. He said, I'm not praising again, Jerry. I said, let me just continue speaking in tongues. The only goal said, no, a goal is about to come in now. And you know what? That was when Nigeria had the most golden opportunity to put in number four. And it didn't enter. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, he said, why didn't you listen to me? So I, I, I just continued and all that. Anyway, to cut a long story short, they pressed to, to equalize. But I prayed all through and Nigeria won. Now, this is the point. It's my own personal experience. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, God used that incident to teach me something. And this is where I'm going. The Lord said, do you know that if my people can depend on me? Now, Nigerians were small beside them. You know what all the commentators said? They said that our people were tired. And that's the truth. Those, uh, those Cameroonians had more, ball, more, uh, more possession of the ball. They had more energy. They had, they, do you understand? They were younger. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They had everything. Now, please understand. Now, God said, if they can depend on me, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, if you pray for them, he said, I will give your people strength and they will beat these giants. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And that led us to Isaiah chapter number 40. He said, oh, history is saying that God has forgotten all my troubles. I don't know whether there's somebody here you feel God has forgotten you. God has forgotten my ways. He has, God has fashioned me. He has lost track of my situation. I'm very, very sure that he can't even see that injustice is being done to me. I'm going through all of this and daddy does not have any sense of, uh, you know, uh, recognition or acknowledgement of my situation. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, have you not known? The next line. <laughs> he said, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the, the, the Lord, the creator of the hands of the heart. His Bible says it does not faint. Neither is he weary. And uh, there is no searching of his understanding. He said he giveth. Can you see it? He giveth. He giveth strength even to the weak. Uh, he giveth strength to the faint. Uh, and to those that have no might, he increaseth uh, strength. He giveth power to the faint. And to those that have no might, he increaseth strength. How does he do it? The Bible says, Hax and it shall be given unto you. Now, Samson was in the prison yard for so long. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? And they brought him out of the prison yard that day. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So he didn't have that power that he exercised in the auditorium. If he had it, he would have brought down the whole wall of the prison yard. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. They brought him out of the prison that day out. And when he got into the auditorium, he had the two pillars. He said, now, just made a short prayer. Judges chapter 16. That is when God is saying, this is the candidate I want to use. 
am I talking to somebody here? That is when God is saying, you know what? I'm going to do something in your life that will be over and above what has never been done. I remember when I got to Harvard, I was speaking with the dean. They said, ah, how are you going to cope with education here? This and this and that. I didn't even know how to use a computer. Can you imagine? That was that bad. Nigeria education, thank God. I got there and this and this and that. You know, but, and somebody said something to me that gingered my feet. He said, Pastor, please break every record there. And with all humility in my heart, I want to say this. To, if, if you see on your type, they type as an ex, at an extraordinary speed. I think they type like 200 words per minute. I'm telling you, I even saw one man typing with one hand at an extraordinary speed. I was speaking and the man was typing everything with one hand. Brrr, ah! When we are in lecture theater, you see them typing, they are taking notes. I'm telling you, and I'll tell one of them, can you email your note to me? By the time I see it, it's like every word that came out of the mouth of the lecturer was typed down by this guy, and not a single typographical error. At an extraordinary speed. And then, you are coming to take exam with such people in the exam hall with computer? I think if you might, you are finished in that situation. But you know one thing, when I was finishing, the dean said, we well, thank God, we never had a student like you, you broke every record. Never, they never had one. Now, even though I couldn't match up with them physically speaking, <laughs> do you understand what I'm talking about? But please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says to them that faint, he give her power. If you can depend on him, the Bible says to those who are weary, he increases what? Strength. So what is that thing that is making thee fear? The Lord said, I should tell you, I can increase your strength. Just as he increased the strength of the small Nigerian players yesterday. They were looking so small beside the Cameroonians. They, maybe they were looking tired. Maybe they were not as energetic as them. Maybe they didn't even have the, their level of ball possession. But you know one thing? If you can pray for them, <laughs> oh, there is... prayed with him. He said, Pastor, all the jobs I was getting, everything was 50,000 naira and 100,000. I'm putting it in his words. No exaggeration. He said, but from that day you prayed with me. He said, sir, it jumped into millions. He said, from that day... He said, so and I decided that let me also buy my own machine. And I went to, he said, you told me from that day that everything has opened up in my destiny. So I went to a microfinance to finance it. As I was coming out, the Holy Ghost said, no. He said, I am giving you that machine. Call this so-so-so person. And they called somebody he knew in the U.S. Ah, the person said, I'm in so-so-so-so place now. I came to visit a friend. And the friend actually is selling, they are selling that machine you are asking me of. And you know one thing? They bought the machine. And they, say, they said, can we go into partnership? And the, the machine now is being shipped. It's on route Nigeria now. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, he needed about 12 million to buy it. And then they bought it and said to him, he said, he said Pastor, from that day, everything. Now, he was crawling. You know one thing? He, he, was, he was into printing. He said, every time I get jobs, it is these people who own machine that will clear all the profit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, he had no might to be able to match. But the Bible says to him that has no might, he increases strength. God can take you from that low level to a higher level. Do you know what I'm talking about? From that level where you feel, I can't get this thing done, God can get it done for you. Am I talking to somebody here? A woman came on Friday as well. The woman said, Pastor, I prayed with her and I saw God giving her a house. And the woman came, in fact, she gave me one fantastic envelope. He said, Pastor, it came to pass. He said, they gave, somebody gave me so, so, so million to go and pay for a house. Now, to buy a house new, not to rent. So brand new house. He said, Pastor, I just paid the money. It was, I think it was that money. He just paid the money. He said, I came to give you your home. <laughs> not one million, not two million, not five million, not eight million, not nine million, not as in huge amount. The other I'm talking about, to go and buy a house. He said, and I went there. In fact, she brought the sand of the house. He said, Pastor, lay hands on. I said, God said you are not going to pay for this house. If somebody is going to pay for it. This was about two weeks ago. And somebody gave her the money. And then she went to pay. Now, please understand, this is what I want to bring her, ladies and gentlemen. She, had, she told me, Pastor, I'm even in debt. I said, to them that have no might, there is a God that increases strength. He specializes in increasing strength. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? I don't know whether you are there this morning. There's something that is making you fear. Your next rent is making you afraid. <laughs> God said, I can increase your might and you will buy both the land and the house. <laughs> am i talking to somebody here are you ready for an increase of strength that is one of the best ways to go conquer fear am i right when you are strengthened of the holy ghost the bible calls him the strength now let's begin to pray in the holy spirit
Let's begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. To those that have no might, the Bible says he increases strength. You are here this morning. There is a God that can increase your strength above those things that you are looking at as Goliaths. Legebo zenemon terebo zupra diskataya. Ligero do zupra ligerox te zuke po yakabaya. He can take you far higher, my God, even than the impact of that damage and the impact of that fear. This morning, there is a God that can increase strength. Please project that Bible verse, Isaiah chapter 40. The Bible says, He giveth yekebo shakata power to the faint. Mambroni and to those that have no might, He increases strength. Even manemon deria, the youth shall faint. Yenkreketo yakaba. And even the young men shall utterly fail. But those that wait upon the Lord, those who can pray like this, the Bible says he renews their strength. They shall mantle up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk, they shall not be weary. They shall run and they shall not faint. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost this morning. Father, increase my strength in life. I want my strength above those things that make me fear. I want my strength above those things that make me fear. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, the way you are praying, you are not seeing what I'm saying. And now, I, you see, me that experienced one yesterday with the football team, I know how to pray this prayer. And that is why I am bringing this to you. I don't know what is your fear, what information you have had, or what situation you are confronted with. That is said, I can take it. Now, let me tell you this. If you hear a bridge collapse, you know it can cause go slow. It is only affecting those who are road users. When God turns your, 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 your vehicle to a craft, aircraft, please understand, the collapse of a bridge has nothing to, 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 to be a concern. I mean, it's not a concern to, to an aircraft. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Well, at that time, God has lifted you beyond the impact of that particular negativity. Do you understand? That means God increases your strength and takes you to a higher realm. We were talking about speed last Sunday. And I said, one thing about speed is that if you can move so high, you can fly. Am I right? That means if God can increase your pace in life, he takes you above that thing. The wickedness of that thing does not affect you anymore. God, that thing does not constitute a fear to you anymore. Oh, they said there is traffic on, um, in uh, Ojota Road now. The bridge there collapsed. So nobody's afraid. No, if you have an helicopter, you will just come out of your house, enter your helicopter and fly. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because why? God has lifted you. Am I talking to someone? Abiola was going to Ibadan for a meeting one day in the days of MKO. And he was in traffic for about two, three hours. You know what he did? He turned back to his house, took his helicopter, and in about 20 minutes he landed in Ibadan. Do you understand? So those who were in traffic could be there for seven hours. Could be there for, for ten hours. It was not his concern anymore. Because he had a better means of moving, he went back to his house. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Father, to those who have no mind, you can take them to a level where that thing doesn't affect them anymore. Where that fear is no longer a fear to them anymore. Father, where the harassment of landlord is no longer an harassment anymore. Father, increase my strength. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Melido shagaba bralido ste sokata yagaba mandele rodokso zo pradi gero ste zupradi kataya Lord Jesus, whatever is a fear, confront it this morning and ask the Lord, Father, I want an increase of strength. I'm not even saying you should bring it down. Take me to a level where it cannot affect me anymore. Take me to a level where that fear is not a concern anymore. In the name of Jesus, Mambra Ligeria, take me to a level where that limitation is not a limitation anymore. Mambra Ligeria, Mambra Zubra Katazigata, Membra Ningeri Dr. Zubra Hagdazia, Mandele Rodok Zubra Ligeri Dr. Zubra Lord, take me to a higher aim. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, take me to a higher aim. Take me to a higher aim. Take me to a higher aim. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, listen. There is this prayer you are going to pray with all your heart. You are going to help me turn to somebody as you pray this prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When America was to fight Iraq, 
Iraq was fighting Iran, America supported Iraq against Iran. So all the, all the you know, military formations of Iraq and all that, America trained them, give them equipment and all that, so they were able to dominate Iran in the, in the battle. Iran now went thinking they were too big now to take over Kuwait, and America went against them. Now, when America was to fight Iraq, Iraq thought that the best America had was what they gave them. You understand what I'm talking about? So they had what could bring down jets. They had missiles that could bring down jets. So they were relying on their missiles. They had warplanes that could fight. They were relying on their warplane. They packed all of them. They had foot soldiers, 500,000 foot soldiers. So th that was the reason why the, the Saddam Hussein was, 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 was rude against uh, uh, George Bush Senior. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And he was saying that they are ready for the fight. Now it depended on what they gave them. Unknown to them, America has gone beyond that level. They just sent B-52 bomber that could enter into their territory. It has a steel body that radar cannot detect. There is a, he entered the attack and then he could fly at about 50,000 feet above the sea level where missiles cannot reach. They are missiles which they had. And he could move at a super stony speed that even for their missile to target it and bring it down would be difficult. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So America just launched that. The first thing they went to their runway where all their jet fighters are. Blew the runway. That means the jet fighters are already useless. They can't fly. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And America just began to pan. They said they were panning like a man panning yam. America sees 170,000 soldiers of Iraq. And then Iraq sees just about 17 or so of America. <laughs> you know the meaning? That means they dominated them. Now, please understand. America looked at it and God gave them a wisdom above the level they, they, they used to have. Therefore, it doesn't matter what Iraq had. It was not a concern to America anymore. You are going to pray, Father, who help me hold somebody. Lord Jesus, whatever is the maximum capacity of the wickedness against this brother, against this sister that I'm holding, Father, take him beyond that capacity. Let him be able to soar above that ability. Lord Jesus, Nehobo Shakata, whatever Malibo Sakata, ya brokato Sakata. Whatever is the maximum capacity of wickedness against this person I'm holding, Whatever is the maximum capacity of fear against this person, whatever is the threat of Goliath against this person, Lord, take him to a higher level above it. My brother, where that fear constitutes no fear anymore, where that fear constitutes no dread anymore, in the name of Jesus, you know the maximum capacity. My father, you can build, my God, something higher than the maximum capacity. My father, increase the strength of this person. Increase the strength of this person to the level. In the name of Jesus, increase. Lengerebo shinaman terebo supra digeroxta Lembro manemante yebro bargate zegetoya Mengre degebo zenemante yegebo babro dia Lengerebo zubra ligeroxta Mambalibo zenenante yembro pargota Regebo zanilate zegeto Mandelero dek zubra ligadoxa Mandelibo zakata Lord Jesus yagaba zegete Take this person I'm holding to a higher level. Beyond my God, the worries and the concerns of any situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in a, there is a realm above here. Oh, there is a realm above here. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. And thus said the Spirit of the Lord. He said, give this as an illustration for this is my word unto someone. And I will confirm that word this week in the life of this person. The Lord said, there is someone that the house rent is one million and you are afraid. Daddy said, imagine when I now provide you a contract of what five billion naira, that your profit line is not less than a billion naira. He said, will the rent be a concern to you anymore? He said, in fact, you will even go and buy your own house. Am I right? And at that stage, henceforth, the fear is permanently subdued permanently habited that is said i should tell you the capacity wired across to you today is far higher than the reach of the fear in the name of jesus <laughs> by the power of the holy ghost by the anointing of him that increase their might i prophesy over every life today that whatever itato has confronted you whatever you have looked at and you are so afraid of 
from today, I bring that thing right under your feet in the name of Jesus. I was studying 1 Corinthians 15 yesterday and the Bible said, God said, see that my right hand until I put all enemies under your feet and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead. Therefore, I prophesy that from today, everything inimical, every Goliath that has been raging against your life, every voice that has been speaking against you, everything that you have been looking at, intimidating you, coming up with a posture that has an intimidation in itself, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I subdue them Permanently under your feet. There is a rhyme where those things don't touch you anymore. I used to be a dullard. They would say, go for exams. I would be so afraid. But from the day it touched my brain, even if it is one hour, I have to read for an exam. Even if it is one hour, it is more than sufficient for me. Because that one hour, we may, I mean, during exam time, that is the best time I always travel. When I was in Abba, that was always the time. Why? Because I will enter a day before the exam start. And I will enter in the night. Then the night time is okay. Just give me two hours. I will blast. Why? Something touched. So the fear of how Agberu Beso left my life from that day. That I will palm it and on the exam I will forget it. That fear left. I pray every area where fear has plagued you. May capacity be wired across in the name of Jesus. From today, you will never be subdued by fear. And every day of your life, it will be from one testimony to the other. As Timothy was subdued, you will not be subdued. I see capacity increased. I see, I see capacity increased. I see capacity increased. It give it power to defend and to those that have no might he increases strength I don't care what the situation was when you were coming into this service there is an increase on your side thank you Jesus in Jesus mighty name we are prayed let's put it together for Jesus Praise the living Jesus. Please let's stretch forth our hands towards Pastor Femi and Pastor Tommy. And let's bless them from our heart. You can pray it in tongues. Because you might not be able to say everything at once. But when you pray it in tongues, you have communicated them more than what you could have think or thought. Father Malika Satanda Liraba. Lena Kosa Tari Bokana Dira. Len de Nima Baros de Teli Rabata. Nida Satari Boko Sahinada. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for Pastor Femi and Pastor Tommy that you have used to bless us this morning. We give you all the glory that, Lord, that the voice I hear at the hands of the earth in Jesus' name, that you take them far in the mighty name of Jesus, and they will continue to be a blessing to the body of Christ at large in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give all our adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the living Jesus. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's time to give our offering. Today's first Sunday, we're giving offering and thanksgiving. If you're paying your tithe this morning, tithe, your special seed of first fruit. It's not too late to pay your first fruit. I know we're in the seventh month of the year, but you can still pay your first fruit. We're giving your special seed and offering. Pastor is going to pray over then, and after that, we'll pray over our love offering. If you're giving your tithe, via bank transfer. The account is on the screen. You can do via bank transfer. We have a POS at the back. You can pay with your ATM cards at the back. And you can easily check in the name of Divine Glory Christian Church. And please kindly remember to sign against any alteration. And you can also put your phone numbers at the back of the check in case we need to get across to you. And for those watching us online, you can go to our website, www.ggcinternational.org and click on the given icon over there. There is a secured portal where you can give to the Lord this morning. So you are putting your tithe on your first fruit or a special seed can rise for prayers. So I invite Pastor Femi to pray over them. Hallelujah. The Lord said that somebody here you are going through a contention presently. That is said, I should tell you that the contention is resolved in your favor. 
anybody that is contending with you over anything. The Lord said I should tell you that the contention is finally won for you by the angels of God. So from today, in the name of Jesus, victory is your portion. Amen. Can we please rise up with our first fruits and our tithes and our confidence aids and raise them so high? Father, we just want to say a big thank you. Because we know, Lord Jesus, all these that we give came from you. And we thank you for blessing us with capacity to give. My Father, my God, I pray that in the name of Jesus from today, everybody giving. Next time you are coming here to give, you will be bringing trailer loads of money. The Lord will bless you so much that envelopes will be too small to carry what you are giving. If you believe what I'm talking about, I think the amen should be the loudest in the house. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. Please rise up, please, and lift up whatever you have. Lift them so high on the girl right now. Father, we just want to say thank you. The Lord said there's somebody here, you thought that I have not fought your battle. He said, this had been going on through you in your mind. He said, please change your mindset. He said, I have fought the battle. He said, I have fought the battle. In actual fact, what you have left to gather is the plunder. But all because you don't know that all those who stood against you are down. That's why you've not stepped out to gather the plunders. He said, I've already won the battle for you. I've already won the battle for you. I've already won the battle for you. And the Lord said, I should tell you on the 17th, and between 17th and 19th of this month, even including 28th, 17th, 19th, and 28th of this month, they say, I will do some specific things in your life that you will have reasons to praise me for. Seven, between 17th and 28th of this month. Father, we are so grateful for this word. We receive it, O oh Lord, even in every life we are in, the word is applicable in the mighty name of Jesus. And every offering in the house today is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you. We we'll bless your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord, universe declare no one like you. Come on, can we sing together? Come on. You can't compare to such all over. He must tremble.
We serve a God of Agidigba. Hallelujah. As Pastor has described him this morning, he's the one that created billions and billions and billions of galaxies. He's worthy of our praise. It's testimony time. Overcomers time. We have a number of testifiers in the house. Can you please quickly come forward? Mr. Biodun, Uluwale, Stoin Yoketola. Cesar de Kemi and Florencia. Praise the Lord, church. I want to thank God for my life and for my business. Last week, Sunday, marked one year I started my business. So I just want to give God all the glory because this business has just been moved by faith. Like, I, I barely don't know how I keep moving forward. It's just God. Like, there's no explanation, just God. So I just really want to give God all the glory. Thank Hallelujah. You. And he will continue to increase that business in leaps and bounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, I will implore us to just give me, like, a minute extra because I want to sing a song to the almighty God. And the song says, Mo dukbe, mo rianuba, mo dukbe, Moria Nuba Tori Koshe Bobwe Nion Loria Nuba. I want to bless the name of the Almighty God because He has spared me, He has kept me, He has blessed me, He has enlarged me, He has expanded me. In the year 2017, I also started a business and um, gradually I didn't used to see myself as a business person. I was always like, okay. It's just working in an organization. But when I started and I needed to expand, I took up a loan. After I picked the loan, the devil struck and I don't know what happened. In just one day, 250,000 was lost, just like that. And I became down, I was so disturbed then. But I kept trusting God. I knew that cannot make me lose my faith. And now I'm here standing right here this morning to give God, the almighty God, the one who created the universe, the one who can never fail, the one who can never change, the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever, till eternity, that he restored me, that he expanded me, that he enlarged me, that I never knew I lost anything. And I began to expand even much more than I could imagine. I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it will continue to increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to give God praise because um, throughout the month of June, I was experiencing financial miracles on a weekly basis, even foreign currency. And I just praise God. And God, this is another week, so I'm expectant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And surely he will do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for adding another year to my life on Friday. I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we continue to beautify your life in the name of Jesus. Can we just key into those testimonies of increase as we bow down our head this morning? He has declared it is time of speed, of acceleration for us. And so shall it be in every life in the name of Jesus. We increase on every side in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' glorious name. Hallelujah. Let's listen to the following announcement. Announcement for today, Thanksgiving service, Sunday, July 7, 2019. This Saturday, 13th July, is another great opportunity to sit down and learn at the feet of Jesus. It is Kingdom Life Series. Hallelujah. The interdenominational teaching ministry of our senior pastor, it holds every second Saturday of the month by 10 a.m. 
It's an opportunity to sit down and learn deep things that enhances our dominion in life. Invite others and create time to attend this month's edition. It's time to learn and rest. The e-flyer for the program is available on our church WhatsApp platforms. Please use them to invite others. Time again is 10 a.m. this Saturday. God bless you as you attend and invite others. Next Sunday, July 14th, we have two great services here, as we do every second Sunday of the month. First service is communion service, starting 9 a.m. prompt. The second service is healing and fire service, starting 11 a.m. immediately after the first service. Come with strong faith and invite others, including those who are sick, and the power of God will present the power of God present will break yokes in Jesus' name. Our House Caring Fellowship also holds next Saturday, 14th of July, at the various centers across Lagos. Lists of centers are displayed on the notice board at the back of the auditorium. If you have not joined a center, kindly check and join one to attend the fellowship next Sunday. The House Fellowships afford us the opportunity to learn the Word of God interactively ask questions, pray together, and take the communion. A prayer meeting continues this Wednesday, July 10th, 2019, year by 6.30 p.m. Let's come in here to receive the word and move the hand of God over situations through prayers. Our God answers prayers. If you can't genuinely make the service, you can join by streaming the service live on YouTube or on YouTube. Audio and video messages of our past services are also available for sale at the resource desk at the back of the auditorium. Get there to buy or order your copy. Blasphemy is available for one-on-one -on -one counseling and prayers at the church office on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 1.30 p.m. at 30 Adekone Faji Iwejiari Kejan. You can also see him for the same purpose after service today if you've attended the service and have registered with the ushers to see him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so it's time to welcome some amazing people in our midst. Today is their first time of worshiping with Divine Glory Christian Church. And we are so, so glad that God ordered their steps here. I can see somebody smiling already. All right, so help me ask the person next to you. Say, is this your first time of coming to church? <laughs> so if that person says yes, please encourage her or encourage him to please stand up and come forward. Let's celebrate them church as they come forward. Please come forward. We want to love on you. God brought you here for a purpose. Thank you. We are in the glory of the Lord. It's a family. You can call. You can call your home. When you never be the same. So light, shine, shine for your light is come. It's your season to arise and shine. Shine for your light is come. Hallelujah! It's your season to shine. No more hiding under the bushel and no more hiding in fear. Is your teasing to break through and shine? I'll be with you in a minute. There's another set of people, they have been in church before, but they've come again and we call them our VIPs. They are VIPs because they are very important people and they are important to us. So if today is your second time or your third time of worshiping with Divine Glory Christian Church and we have not received you as a VIP, please, we want to, please come forward as well. Is anybody here? Yes, yes, let's celebrate it. So rise, shine, oh, oh your light is gone. So rise, shine, for your light is gone. What a sure word we received today. It's time to move from the back side to the front side with the word of God. So it's time to run with the promise that God has given to you. And that's the word I'm leaving with you. It's your season of breaking forth and shining in Jesus' name.
This is Divine Glory Christian Church and every Sunday, every Wednesday and also our vigil services. We meet here and we engage with God's word. The spirit of God is always present. The spirit of prophecy is always here. The spirit of faith and our lives just move forward. In this place, there is no segregation. It's open to all race, all gender. And here together, we grow in the knowledge and in the power of God. And we would like you, if you don't have a home church, I know I've seen you before. Please, I hope this is family, it's family church for you. So if you don't have a home church, for those of you coming the first time, we'd like you to please come again and again and again and again. And please make this place your home. Right. So I look forward to seeing you. I think I can see your faces. I will look forward to seeing you again. So please come again. So I'm going to ask the church to do something. They are going to pray for you. So please turn back. Church, I want you to stretch forth your hands to them and speak a word into their lives. Father, we give you praise. The Bible says where you have been despised and no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy to many generations. I decree and declare that God is making you. Your season of making is now. Your season of rising is now. Your season of shining is now. Your season of breaking forth is now. I decree and declare everything that has held you down, everything that has held you back before now, will break it away. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I will decree nothing will hold you back. You will not hold yourself back. Fear will not hold you back. In the name of Jesus, you will grow in the, and you will go in the strength of God and you will become all that God has asked you to be. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Once again, thank you so much for making time out to be with us in Divine Glory Christian Church. My sister is over there. We want to tell you more about Divine Glory Christian Church. Please go with her and please feel at home. Thank you so much. Can we celebrate Pastor Femi as he comes forward? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. By the grace of God, I, I see the glory of God very strong on our lives. And I see men and women walking in higher realms of glory. If I were you, with the message we've had today, I will go and take X place of faith. You know the meaning of that? I'm not going to go and look for a house to rent. I'm going to go and look for a house to buy. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? With this God do, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing he cannot do. I have seen the supernatural work so terrifically that it has come to a point in my life, even if they say there is no God, my daily experiences of power. <laughs> Show me there is God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This God, there is nothing he cannot do. When the spirit of faith is in the house like this, please just step out. It's one thing to carry the spirit of faith, it's another thing for you to step out. If you don't step out, nothing happens. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When I say, oh, I want to buy a car, I move. And then the car meets me there. The money meets me as I'm going. That's how it is. So if you don't move, the money will not what? Will not come. Do you get what I'm talking about? So that is how it is. No, so if you are sitting there and you're like, God, uh, uh, when we go and answer prayers, God said I should tell you yes, answer prayer. That it is now time for you to what? Let me turn to somebody and tell the person it's time to move. Say it again, it's time to take the step. Go now and get the house. Go now and get a job. Go now and get the car. Go now and marry. Go now and do so well in the name of Jesus. Let me let me let me let you know this. Every time God gives us word like this, you know it's amazing when people come to come and see me. A uh, pastor, he gave this prophecy, he came to pass. I said, come out and share a testimony. They said they said they are shy. <laughs> and I see that again and again. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you see, let me let me let me tell you this. When God gives us word and he performs his word. Is worthy of our praise. Let's always come on and share testimonies. That's one. Two, the fact that he gave you the word simply means that this is an outline of what he's about to do in your life. So please walk with God, cooperate with God this week. Don't sit down there and be looking. Go and prize the house, go and prize the land. I'm telling you, miracles will pay for it. Hey, those who believe, see them.
No fear anymore. No more limits. <laughs> As I was sitting there, the Lord said something to me. Can I tell you? He said that man that was getting printing jobs and was taking it to those who are printing machines and they were collecting all the money from him. And that was a big concern in his life. He gave me an account of probably seven to ten years of his life struggling until he came and we prayed for him and God turned around the situation. Now, the man says, some, I mean, God said something to me when I was sitting there. He said, do you think that man will be afraid of uh, those who have printing, you know, press anymore? Now he has his own machine. Am I right? He said, I have lifted him above the wickedness of those people. Am I right? He said, nothing can deprive him of his profit again. Now, and I stood up on the strength of that. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, and I'm saying it, I am lifted above every fear. Nothing will ever depress me again. Nothing will ever suppress me anymore. I said, nothing can oppress me anymore. I am above every fear. Greater capacity is communicated today. If you're that person that I've received, you come and rise to your feet and give him praise for what he has done. Our Father, we just want to say thank you. We love you for blessing us so much today, and we glorify you for all that you have done in our lives. Lord, therefore, I release these people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth as I impact you with grace this week, that this week is a week of marvelous things, that this week is a week of great wonders, that this week is your week of favor, that this week you will enjoy discount like never before, that this week in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, unsolicited blessings will gravitate your direction. By the mercy of God, your name shall be mentioned in the corridors of power. That this week, in the name of Jesus, blessing carriers, they will locate you. Ah, I see dollars coming in for somebody. If you are that person, let the human be the loudest in the house. This week, by the mercy of the living God, Yambra Lido Zigarato Zingre Hegarados de Zubra Hagdahaya, Malido Zinanante, Yegredido Zikata. I want somebody to come with a testimony of a house. Uh, uh, last Sunday, God gave us the uh, reward that somebody had accommodation issue. It was settled immediately, instantly, as in instantly. Within 24 hours, that problem was resolved instantly. God took it away. I mean, God paid for it. God did everything instantly. I am prophesying over somebody here. By the power of the spirit of the living God, before next Sunday, you will be the person to testify of a house miracle. Father, we give you praise. On Saturday, we will be having Kingdom Life Series here. Uh, please, don't see that at all. <laughs> when it is happening here. We are teaching real life issues. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we've got into the practical aspect. This Saturday is going to be another level entirely. Please make it a date with Jesus. And you are going to see his glory. I wish you well, and I see greater glory in your life. Let me join hands with somebody. I want us to share the grace today. Amen. I want us to share the grace today. Are you joining hands with somebody? So we share the grace in fellowship. Surely. When Pastor Tumi was preaching, the Lord gave me a word, and I um, there are two words I want to share them very briefly. The first one is that the Lord said, "Somebody's joy will be when your enemy dies." You understand? I'm talking about those sitting over your blessings. God said, "Your joy will erupt when they die," and the Lord said, "Somebody's joy will be when something new happens." So please understand. You may hear that is your mama that goes, is your auntie that goes, is your this. It is still part of joy. When others are crying, you may shed tears in front of them so as to participate in the, in the tear shedding, uh, tear sharing <laughs> formula. Amen. But when you enter the corner of your room, what do you do? 
you go shout for joy. Am I right? Uh -huh. The Lord said that is somebody's portion in Jesus' name. And then the Lord said there's someone here, you took a drink. And since that time, your body has not been the same. Please see me here so that I can pray for you. God bless you. Have a marvelous week.